Welcome to Bible 360, 1 Corinthians. Corinth was a large and prosperous city, and on the port it had many temples to foreign idols and was a hot spot for loose living and letting it go, a first century AD sin city. Paul tells Christians how to live in a pluralistic and pleasure-seeking world. Paul begins by saying he's grateful for the Corinthians and their faith. The problem is not that they need to level up their spiritual gifts or find better teachers or become more enlightened. What they need is to find satisfaction in what Christ has given them already through his death and resurrection. Which is why it doesn't make any sense to be divided over which preacher they like or don't like. They're all pointing to the same Christ. So. Fighting over which is the best is silly and distracting. Being a Christian is not about being the smartest or the most popular kind of Christian. That sort of prideful infighting is the exact opposite message of the cross. Jesus and his followers are not about pride, power, or prestige. It's about God's salvation being given to us as a gift to the humble and repentant. This is only accomplished through Jesus' humble death and resurrection. It's not the sort of thing anyone can earn or be smart enough or graduate their way into. The cross of Jesus also transforms us and our communities. Humility and sacrificial love are the polar opposites of self-gratification and pride that is the world's status quo. Understanding the message of Jesus and applying it are extremely important to Paul. Uh, the cross and the resurrection are not take them or leave them. Salvation is not an intellectual achievement. It can only be revealed to us by God's Spirit. While Paul attacks petty arguments, he repeatedly argues against a permissive attitude towards sin. How you live is not only your own business. Paul is appalled not only that a man is having an affair with his stepmom, he's offended that the church has accepted this. Paul says, kick him out until he repents. Paul's likewise disgusted that members of the church are suing each other. You've clearly missed the whole point of the gospel. The gospel is not about advantages, property, or rights, but about sharing the good news of forgiveness and a new community. You're embarrassing us. Apparently, some of Paul's opponents claim his message and his own life look pathetic, not impressive. Paul reminds them, I'm not in a popularity contest. The only judge whose opinion matters is the eternal judge. You're right. I often look weak, and I'm sometimes treated like junk. Why, though? If I'm after my own advantage, why do I suffer for the gospel? If I'm fleecing you, why have I never asked you for money? My suffering is proof of my sincerity. In a city full of temples and idols to them, Paul has lots of temple talk. Christians, though, are God's temple, a spirit-filled temple. Many in Corinth think they can do whatever they want with their bodies, but Paul says not so. They are not just junk. They are holy and precious to God, and they are to treat those things that are valuable like their own bodies with respect and care. So treat your body in such a manner, not just sleeping around or overindulging because it simply feels good. Paul describes the advantage of being single because he can give more attention and loyalty to the Lord. Paul says marriage is okay too, but the point is to focus your identity in your Lord, not in your relationship status. The world is not the end all. So don't live or plan as if this world is all that there is. Advancing God's eternal kingdom and mission are more important than our own kingdoms or missions. Paul also gives instructions regarding worship. Engaging in sex with temple prostitutes was considered holy to the Gentiles, uh, but it was idolatrous to Christians. Part of pagan worship was also taking part in sacrifices, eating the goods dedicated to temple idols. Paul says, certainly don't participate in pagan festivals themselves. Uh, but what about the meat sold at discount prices afterwards? Paul says, well, you can buy that. An idol is nothing, and food is from God. We give thanks for it. However, uh, the Corinthians were living in a thoroughly and practicing pagan city like Corinth. For some, it was hard to disassociate the meat from the idols it had been associated with. Uh, therefore, the most important question is not what's good for me, uh, but what's good for the church. In many cases, you shouldn't eat the meat because some of your fellow Christians might take it as license to partake in pagan orgies and the parties they used to live for. So if you can help your fellow sister or brother in Christ, 
avoid sin by not buying it, then is the discount steak really worth the savings? The answer should be no. In regards to the public worship, the point is similarly not about your rights or wants, because service isn't about you, but about Christ and about the church, which is why Paul roundly condemns how they've abused the Lord's Supper. They've treated it like a pagan festival, an excuse to party. The rich have gotten drunk, and there's none left over for the poor. Don't you realize how wrong this is, Paul says? The bread is a way we participate in the body of Christ. The cup is a way we are included in the saving blood of Christ shed on the cross. Don't disregard or dishonor the Lord's sacrifice or your brothers or sisters. Paul reminds the Corinthians they are a body. Different parts are meant to work together. They need to honor and to help each other, not fight against each other. As they bicker over who's the most important job or who has the best spiritual gifts, Paul instead emphasizes love. It's love that Christ showed. Sharing the message of Christ and loving like Jesus is the ultimate goal for Christians, not being the smartest or the most important. Likewise, when it comes to worship or speaking together, the point is to proclaim Christ, not to grab everyone's attention by looking or sounding the most impressive. Jesus offers us something different from the world, redemption through the cross and empty grave.